Honors Biology, Genetics. Today we're going to talk about various other factors as far as uh, genetics concepts. We're going to start with blood types. Now, there are four different blood types, A, B, A, B, and O. And for today, we're not going to talk about Rh negative and positive. If you have type A blood, there's one of two ways to get that type of blood. Either you're going to be big A, big A, or big A blank. If you don't have any um, allele for blood types, then you're going to end up being O's. We're going to talk about later. If you have type B blood, you have either big B, big B, or big B blank. If you have type AB blood, you have only one genotype, type A, uh, big A, big B. Don't worry about the little eyes here. The eyes just mean it's a blood type. And then if you have type O blood, you're just blank blank or I, I. Uh, as far as antibodies producing your serum, serum and who you can give blood to, we're going to talk about that fourth quarter when we talk about the immune system. So let's talk about how this uh, works. Let's go ahead and write this down in our notes. Blood types and genetics. Now this isn't in your packet, so you're going to have to write this down. So let's say we have a mom with type A blood and a dad with type O blood. What are the possible offspring they can make? Well, once again, if you have A blood, that's going to be either big A, big A, or big A blank, and that's how I uh, abbreviate the blank. If you have type B blood, you're either going to be big B, big B, or big B blank. If you have type AB blood, only one genotype gives you that, and that's AB. And if you have type O blood, you're going to be blank blank. So let's do the cross. Well, if we don't know what this uh, parent is as far as a genotype, we have to do two Punnett squares. So let's do the first Punnett square where the, this parent here is big A, big A. Big A, big A, blank, blank. And if you do this cross, you get A blank, A blank, A blank, A blank. So if this parent here is big A, big A, all the children will have A blood. However, let's say this parent here is A blank. They're going to make the gametes with the alleles A blank. The other parent only has blanks. So we get A blank, blank, blank. A blank, blank, blank. So the kids in this cross, if the parent that's type A is A blank, then you can have 50% of the kids getting A blood and then 50% of the kids getting O blood. So if your parents were A and O and you have O blood, there's only one way to get that O blood, blank, blank, which is um, if this parent here is A blank. And a blank just represents what's on the outside of the red blood cells. Red blood cells either have an A cell marker, a B, it doesn't actually look like a B, it's just a description of the uh, glycoprotein, or nothing, which will be O. So A and B together is A, B blood. Just B is B, just A is A, and nothing is O. All right, so let's see if we can do a, a little practice problem here. Who's the daddy? A blood type A mom gives birth to an O child. Mom says it could be either the mailman or the deli clerk. Joe the mailman has type B blood. Steve the deli clerk has type AB blood. Can one or both be eliminated as a possible father and why? Pause at this time and try to figure out what the answer is. So, mom once again was type A. Mom. Kid is type O. Now there's only one way to get type O blood, blank, blank. The, uh, the mailman and deli clerk are the two possible sperm donors. Mailman was type mailman was type B, so they can be either BB or B blank. Deli clerk was AB. So they have to be A, B. So let's take a look here. If mom was A, she could either be big A, big A, or big A blank. The kid is O. Now, if the kid is O, this has to be the mom's genotype because mom had to give the kid one of the two blanks. She has to give some of that genetic information. So we can make that uh, assumption. So let's take a look at the mailman. If the mailman is uh, B, B, uh, all he has is to give B alleles to the kid, and the kid's going to have a B allele uh, if that is the, the genotype, and the kid is O. It doesn't have any B alleles. But the other possibility is B blank. So let's take a look here. Mailman's genotype, uh, making gametes, mom. And if we take a look here, we have a 25% chance of producing a kid with type O blood. So he's the suspect. That doesn't guarantee he's the one. You have to do more genetic tests, but he's not eliminated. Now let's take a look at that deli clerk. If the deli clerk is AB and mom 
is a blank, then we get A, B, A, A, A blank, and B blank. There's no possibility of making O blood, blank, blank, from a deli click that's A, B. So this guy's off the hook. He's not going to have to pay child support or, uh, you know, do anything else. So, uh, but the mailman, eh. all right, let's move on. So here are some diseases you should know are recessive. That means if you have two of the recessive alleles, you have it. If you have one normal allele, the dominant allele is normal, you don't have it, but you're a carrier. And if you have two of the dominant alleles, you're just fine. So how does this usually work? Well, if you take a look here, we got one parent, big A, little a, another parent, big A, little a. If the people have the disease, they're going to uh, be little a, little a. So typically, and they don't usually have children because, you know, they wouldn't want to pass on something like this. The way these recessive alleles get passed on is by carriers. So we're going to do a quick practice problem with uh, cystic fibrosis and Tay-Sachs, uh, and you'll get a better idea of what's going on. So let's go and write this down. Let's say big C is normal. Recessive disease, and that's going to be um, little c will be cystic fibrosis. Basically, you choke on your own snot. And typically, how people pass this on is by carriers. So let's say we have a normal female and a normal male, and we have 25% chance, totally normal kid. 50% chance a carrier, but still normal. There's no, they have the big C, and that's dominant to cystic fibrosis. But there's a 25% chance of the kid with the disease. And that's how these things typically get spread on. Carriers pass it on. The same is true of Tay-Sachs. Tay-Sachs is where the lipids build up in your brain. And let's go ahead and write that down. Let's see this. Big T is normal. Little t is Tay-Sachs. And once again, it's just like this uh, cross up here. Let's say we have someone with Tay-Sachs, which would be little t, little t, and someone who's a carrier. Well, in that case, he produced two carriers and two kids with the disease. As far as a ratio, 50% chance the kids will actually have the disease, 100% chance they're going to have at least one allele, and 50% chance of being a carrier. And that's how you analyze these kind of pine squares. If you knew you had Tay-Sachs in your family, even though you don't have it, you might be a carrier uh, or cystic fibrosis, you would want to check with your future spouse to see if the same disease was there to do some genetic testing to make sure you don't pass that on. You wouldn't want to have kids that are going to die by the time they're five. All right, so Tay-Sachs affects mainly Jews of Eastern European descent. That's where the mutation first started. It has nothing to do with religion. And um, basically, the lipids uh, aren't broken down by lysosomes. There's a malfunctioning enzyme. So it lipids build up in the brain, and the kid dies by the time they're five. And that's Tay-Sachs. Cystic fibrosis affects mainly uh, European Caucasians. And one in 25 white people is a carrier. So that's pretty common in white populations. And uh, basically, for cystic fibrosis, also a recessive disorder, uh, the kid dies by the time they're five, but with treatment can live into their 20s. Cystic fibrosis uh, basically is a failure of uh, allowing water to move from a uh, high to low concentration. Uh, salt will be pumped out. Once the salt is there, it's hypertonic. The water leaves by osmosis. Normally, your lung mucus is nice and uh, thin. However, if this protein channel doesn't work, the osmosis can't happen, the mucus starts building up in your lungs and you're constantly coughing up phlegm and it's pleiotropic, it's going to have all kinds of different problems and that's cystic fibrosis. All right, codominance. Codominance is uh, where both the alleles are dominant. Now remember, dominant is usually over recessive. In chickens, however, white feathers and black feathers are both expressed equally. They're codominant to each other. If you have the white feather allele and the black feather allele, you'll have white and black feathers. Now don't confuse codominance with something else that we're going to talk about called incomplete dominance. That's a blending of traits. Incomplete dominance, not talked about yet, is where you kind of blend the two colors together. In codominance, they're expressed equal and separate from each other. Also, blood types are codominant, which means that if you have the A and B allele, you express both separate from each other on those red blood cells. Take a second to review codominance and the two, cystic fi uh, the two recessive diseases. Sickle cell anemia is also codominant. If you have one of the normal allele for making hemoglobin and one of the recessive allele, you'll make both red blood cells that are normal and sickled cells, which uh, the person can survive. However, if they get two sickle cell allele, um, then they're going to have some real problems and they usually die by the time they're five. Sickle cell anemia affects mainly Africans, um, African populations, and that's just where the mutation originated. The two alleles are codominant, uh, so that means if you have 
one of each allele, the big A for normal, and uh, it really shouldn't be little a, it should be like a big S. Uh, you'll have both normal and red uh, sickled red blood cells. Here we have all the different effects that happens as a result of sickle cell. Malaria, however, can infect, infect the sickle cells. So people that have one of each allele, uh, the dominant and recessive, produce enough normal red blood cells to carry oxygen, and the uh, sickle cells prevent them from getting this little guy that lives in mosquitoes. So the heterozygotes, the uh, one with both alleles, have an advantage. It's called the heterozygote advantage, and one in 400 African Americans uh, has that, and it's thought that it provides a survival advantage in areas with lots of malaria. Incomplete dominance is a blending of two alleles. Uh, and here we have an example. If you have big R, big R, you have red. Little big W, big W, or little R, little R, you're going to have white. However, if you have a heterozygote, you have a, a blending of the two traits for pink. And that is an example of incomplete dominance. Here we have the cross for that. Here we have the cross of uh, big R, little uh, big W, which are incomplete dominance. And uh, if you have both, you end up with pink flowers. It's a blending of the two traits. And here you can see the punch score for that. This ends our genetics concepts for honors biology.